Some months back, I presented a project that was titled a DYI No Frills Antenna Analyzer. The video was well received and a number of you have had some luck building your own version of that project. This time, I'd like to show that that same circuit and another code sketch can give you a way to monitor and manage your PSK31 transmissions. So if you use this mode or have an interest in it, then this video may be worth taking a look at. Now, let's get started by first reviewing some basic concepts. PSK31 requires very little bandwidth and yet offers reliable data exchange rates of up to 50 words per minute using 5 to 30 watts of power. On 40, 20, and 15 meters, it's not uncommon to see 10 or more conversations all taking place within a 1 to 2 kilohertz band segment. Unthought of band densities when I first started ham radio back in the 70s. But you don't have to watch the waterfall long before you come across transmissions that look like this. In my opinion, these are not deliberate, but because most radios don't come with the instrumentation needed to report the quality of a PSK31 transmission, the problem goes unrecognized. To explain further, if the transmitted output envelope doesn't track a two-tone single sideband signal, the bandwidth consumed quickly explodes. Most setup discussions related to this subject leave the impression that if the transmitter's ALC doesn't engage, then the transmission will be clean. But that presupposes everything else is working perfectly. When computers, external sound cards, plus a host of other interface electronics are combined with RF floating around the station, the modulating signal can easily lose its sinusoidal shape. But, as I said earlier, the DYI antenna analyzer programmed with a different sketch provides a low-cost way to visualize your transmitter's output and will quantify the total harmonic distortion in near real time. So, there's no reason to be flying blind. Okay, you say, I get the problem, but how does the antenna analyzer work as a PSK monitor? As I mentioned earlier, there's a new sketch, and it does all the work. The truth of the matter is, even as simple as the antenna analyzer is, it actually contains more electronics than is needed for this application. So the software ignores those parts and just uses what is needed. In this case, those components used to measure the reflected signal. To be clear, you don't need to remove anything, but if you built the antenna analyzer following the original diagram, then you will want to change some capacitor values. C1 and C2 are now 140 picofarads, and C3 and C4 are 0 0.001 microfarads each. These value changes improve the frequency response of the peak detector. Also, in the first video, some time was devoted to explaining how and why the sketches contain code to linearize the diode's output. The same issues apply here as well. And because we would like to report harmonic energy that is as much as 30 dB below the fundamental, a linear RF input to digital output response is even more important than before. So the sketch contains what is believed to be an improved conversion equation. Now, before we take a look at the sketch in action, let's see how the circuit is connected to the radio. In my case, the DX1200 has a built-in antenna tuner, which in turn is connected to a set of resonant antennas. These antennas have an impedance that range from a low of 17 ohms to a high of 107 ohms. The setup also here also includes a homemade antenna switch to select the appropriate antenna. This switch made for a convenient point to tap the signal. The tap is nothing more than an 8.2K resistor connected to the antenna's center conductor. The other end of this resistor 
is connected to ground through a 220 ohm resistor. The analyzer's antenna jack is then connected in parallel with this 220 ohm resistor. This means the signal applied to the bridge input is a scaled down version of what's applied to the antenna. The exact scale factor is not critical, but for the power being applied to the antenna, we want the Arduino's A to D peak value to be somewhere between 200 and 700. I say 700 max because we want to leave some room to handle unexpected signals that exceed the normal operating conditions. So now that we know what a PSK signal should look like and how the analyzer is connected to the radio, let's see it in action. This is the standalone mode and used this way it's actually quite simple. To use it, transmit an idle pattern and the display will respond with three pieces of information. First, there's the outline of half of the RF envelope. Then shown within the left side of the envelope is the intermod value and to its right is something labeled PKV. This stands for peak value, not peak volts, and it's the A to D's maximum value. The same number I was talking about a minute ago that I said we would like to see readings between 200 and 700. The envelope view is normalized, so all you look for in it, it is shape, i.e. does it have the classic signature of a full wave rectified sine wave. If it looks flat topped, then the transmitter is probably being driven into limiting. And if it takes on some other irregular shape, then it could be the signature of something else like RF getting into the audio circuit. The more negative the IMD number, the better, but 30 minus 30 probably represents a practical limit. So that was the standalone mode, and as we saw, it will let you validate first hand PSK issues related to corrupted modulation. Now let's look at a second way to use this setup. This time, we will add a second piece of software. Originally written in 2005 by David W1HKJ, the same person many of you will recognize as FL Digi's main author. He called his 2005 program PSK Scope, and I continue to use that name. But to be clear, this is a modified version, and as such, the two are not interchangeable. So if you elect to go this route, be sure to use the version found at the link included in the intro comments for this video. One other caveat I need to be clear about is PSK Scope is a Windows only or uses a Windows only API, so it only works on Windows. To date, I've tried it on Windows 10 and Windows Vista, so I'm thinking it should work on anything in between. With that behind us, what does it do? Well, my answer is PSK Meter, the Adreno sketch, passes its data samples to PSK Scope. Then, based on your user defined parameters, it adjusts the sound card's volume setting to maintain a consistent output. If you've chosen the parameters well, then the transmitter's output should always be just below the radio's working limits. For example, on my DX1200, I find the amount of audio needed to stay out of limiting changes over time. But PSK Scope pretty much lets me set it and forget it. Well, in spite the disjointed video, I hope you can see that this simple setup has the potential to help us all look a little sharper on the band, if not in what we say, at least in how much space we take to say it. Hi. And as always, good luck with your next project. 73 from Jim, KW4KD.